place and, you know, I want to do another year. So that's what it came down to, you know, being close to my family and, and coming back and playing with these guys. Because, um, you know, this team is amazing. You know, coaching staff is amazing. So was that was that a tough decision to come to? I mean, you talked about your, your love for the university and what it means for you to play at Ohio State. When you're also looking at the possibility of a professional career and doing this for a living, how difficult ultimately did that decision become for you? Yeah, it was tough. Um, you know, I was I was thinking about it for a while. Um, you know, just the whole process of it was kind of overwhelming. Um, but at the end of the day, like, you know, I'm happy with my decision because of, like you said, of how much, you know, I love this place, um, how much I love my teammates, you know, my coaches, and then, you know, I'm close to my family as well. So um, those are all things that definitely, you know, weighed into it, but uh, I'm, I'm happy with, you know, the decision I made. Hey, Steve Hellwagon. Hey, Kyle. Um, academically, just wanted to kind of clarify, uh, did you already graduate with your bachelor's degree and what maybe would be the academic plan? Are you graduating this semester? I don't know. I, I guess I'm up, not up to date on where that stood, but uh, maybe where that's at and what the plan is for you in this extra year. Yeah, so I was actually able to graduate uh, last summer um, with a degree in sport industry, and then uh, I started my master's program. So I'm, I'm towards the end of my master's program in sport management right now. Um, I have a few more things left uh, to do to wrap that up, but I'll have my master's here pretty, uh, hopefully pretty soon, maybe by the end of the summer or next fall. Yeah, there were two weekends, obviously, the Big Ten tournament, the NCAA tournament, um, and you missed the last two games of the Big Ten tournament and obviously didn't play the NCAA tournament, two different experiences, I guess, and, and maybe your health was at a different place in both those weekends. Just, I don't know, what what can you recollect about what those situations were? We all saw they took you off the court in the middle of the game uh, against Purdue. And I don't know, just what, uh, after you had basically the best half of basketball anybody has seen in a long time, <laughs> Yeah. I don't know, just your whole recollection of that chain of events, I guess. Um, yeah, I mean, it was crazy just, uh, you know, coming off of how I had the first, uh, you know, incident happen, you know, against Michigan, um, came back, recovered, um, you know, was feeling great, you know, really wasn't, I wasn't having any issues in any other, you know, area, um, like with my body or my health. So, you know, I was feeling great playing good basketball and, you know, ended up getting hit in that second half. Um, against Purdue and you know at first like, like it, was, it was a it was a hard hit but um, I really didn't feel any of the symptoms that I had like the concussion symptoms that I had um, so you know I, I told them you know I was good and I wanted to keep going um, it wasn't until I had sat down in the huddle uh, after the timeout that everything kind of came on and then um, from that point it was just uh, you know trying to recover and get my head right uh, it was tough because, like you said, I, was, I had to miss those Big Ten games and then even leading up into the next week, uh, the NCAA tournament. So it's tough watching, you know, especially, um, you know, being in my in my fourth year, uh, having been through it and wanting to really be a part of it. Um, it, it was tough to watch. But, uh, you know, I, I, that whole time, you know, I had the utmost confidence, you know, in my teammates. And that was, that was never a doubt of, of me being out. It was just, you know, wanting to be a part of it with them. Thank you. Hey, Patrick Murphy. Hey, Kyle. Um, we've already seen you guys add another big man um, in, in Joey. So I'm curious when you're talking about coming back with the coaching staff this year, how much you guys talked about your role. Uh, it seems a bit more crowded now in that position. Um, and Ibrahima, obviously, we assume will be healthier. Just what, what, what do you see your role being and how does that fit in um, with, with kind of the, the collection of bigs you guys now have? Yeah, um, definitely, you know, talk to them a little bit. Um, we don't know exactly how things are going to look, um, but, you know, I you know, plan to continue developing my game. Um, you know, even as it was this past year, you know, just, just being able to stretch out to, you know, the wing, uh, shoot, um, you know, more low post options, stuff like that. So just developing my game offensively and defensively, um, I think we'll be able to help. And then, um, you know, I'm still going to be doing – you know, um, the things I'm used to be doing, you know, I'm, I'll still probably be, you know, guarding the five at times, stuff like that too. Um, so those are things that won't change, but, um, you know, just planning to develop my game, uh, 
you know, to be a more, more of a threat on the offensive end. And then Coach Holtman told us, I think for a couple of those games you missed, you were able to at least be in the locker room with the guys. Um, how, how much was that helpful? I know it's still probably tough to just have to watch it on TV, but at least to be around the guys and, and whatnot, how was that experience for you? Yeah, no, that was definitely, um, that definitely helped just because, um, you know, early on, it was just kind of like by myself and couldn't do much and had to be, a, be alone recovering. Um, but once I was able to, you know, get back with the guys, um, you know, that helped me and just, you know, being able to talk to them and um, just feel more a part of it. But um, it was still tough you know, having to just sit in the locker room and watch the games. Um, you know, you never want to have to be in that position. Uh, but, you know, things happen for a reason. So, thank you. Okay, uh, Colin. Hey, Kyle, you, you talked about, you know, some of the conversations that you have had about, you know, what it would look like if, if you were to, to, you know, go take the professional route right now. What would that path have looked like? Like, where would you be right now? What would, what type of, you know, leagues would you be looking at playing in? Um, no, I didn't get into too many, uh, like, specifics of where, you know, there was, there was places they mentioned, but it was more of just me trying to get to know, uh, these guys uh, figure out what they're about. Um, start like building the relationship with them, because um, then like if I were to you know choose to uh, turn pro, then you know I would end up uh, first would probably just sign with one of those guys and then go from there. Um, but there really wasn't too many specifics uh, talked about. You talked about you know you this you not wanting to end your Ohio State career the the, the way that it would have ended how. How do you want to end it this time, a year from now? Um, you know, the, just the way that I wasn't able to play, um, you know, really wasn't able to have an impact on the outcome. And, um, you know, I just want, you know, to experience, you know, a full year um, more normal um, than obviously, you know, COVID year. You know, this, this past year was great. You know, I, we made, you know, we did some great things with this team and, um, you know, just the chemistry we have with this team, you know, all these guys are special, but um, just being able to, you know, have a full year um, that feels more normal and then, you know, just compete in, you know, the Big Ten and NCAA tournament, you know, at the level I, I would like to. Um, but, you know, it's just really just about, you know, having another year, being able to play, you know, in front of Buckeye Nation and, and you know, all these amazing fans and my family. So, Thanks. yeah. Hey, Griffin. Hey, Kyle, um, you know, we, we talked a little bit about you guys bringing in uh, Joey, obviously, um, you know, transferring from Indiana. And also you guys are bringing in uh, Jamari Wheeler from Penn State as well. Um, I'm wondering, uh, do you have any specific memories or first impressions of uh, playing those guys in the past and what your thoughts and kind of first reaction was to hearing that both of those guys were going to be coming in uh, for you over the offseason? Yeah, I mean, both uh, super good guys. Um, you know, I just talked to Jamari for the first time. Uh, we just chatted it up a little bit, you know, it seems like a super good dude. Um, and then just from playing against him, you, I mean, he plays super hard, you know, he competes. Um, and, you know, that's going to be someone, you know, that, that we need for sure. So, um, and then Joey, I've, I've known Joey previously um, from, you know, his time when he was at Butler. Um, I had already developed a relationship with him uh, there. So we've talked, um, you know, on and off just, you know, about, how basketball is going and things like that. And I just talked to him uh, recently here. So um, he's going to be, a, he's going to be a huge app for us too. So we're, you know, we're excited about both of them. Um, you know, I think they're both guys that, that fit pretty well with the, the Ohio State uh, program, what we're about. Thanks. All right, Adam, you're up. Um, Kyle, you, you talked about being, you know, feeling better and, and, and everything. I just wondered, like, what what did it look like for you once the season ended? Like, how long did it take until you felt like you were back to normal and able to, to shake off all the, the effects of that second concussion? Uh, you know, it did, it did take some time. Um, even towards, you know, like, um, you know, that last game in the tournament for us, um, I was starting to feel, you know, more back to normal. It just took, I don't know the exact dates, but, um, you know, I still, after the season ended, I still took some time before I was able to really start doing anything again. Um, but, you know, I'm feeling, I'm feeling 100% now back to normal. Uh, 
like myself. So um, it was just a matter of, you know, stepping back and, and taking time to myself and letting everything heal. Was there any any part as you're trying to decide what the next decision was when you when you do have two concussions in a short amount of time like that? Did any part of you wonder if it was a good idea to come back? Did did, did you consider maybe hanging it up? Um, no, that really wasn't a thought for me. Um, you know, especially as I started to feel better. Um, I mean, it's hard not to think about you know like that because that could be that could be potentially very dangerous. But um, you know, I was I was starting to feel you know like myself again and. Uh, I tried to, so you know, to not let that be too big of a, a factor in my decision just because, you know, injuries could happen at any time, anywhere. Um, so I tried to not really let that focus in too much and just focus on, you know, the things like I mentioned earlier. Okay, we're going to Andy Evans. Kyle, uh, I, I, I had a buddy uh, who lives in Maslin, uh, and we were having a conversation about you literally the night before the Purdue game. And his comment to me was, I don't understand why we haven't seen Kyle shooting the deep ball. And then literally the Purdue game happens. Um, why hadn't we seen you shooting the deep shot throughout your career up until that game? And then you, 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 you kind of broke out and went nuts a little bit. Um, I mean, I think it's a lot of things, you know, um, earlier on in my career, you know, I was just focused on, you know, finding my role, um, you know, what was going to keep me on the floor, um, you know, early on playing, playing behind a lot of good players, you know, I was able to learn a lot from them. Um, and then, you know, as I was stepping into my own role, you know, my sophomore year, um, I kind of found the identity of, you know, you know, toughness, uh, rebounding, you know, 50, 50 plays, stuff like that. Um, and, you know, I really hadn't had that confidence uh, offensively yet that I was able, you know, to build into my game um, later on in my career. But, you know, through this past year and this last summer, um, you know, I think that was able to develop just through, you know, consistent hard work and, and reps. And, you know, that's something that I've always, you know, I've always been a hard worker and, I, you know, I pride myself in that. But, you know, this past summer, it's something I really focused on and, you know, and, and focused in on that um, that I could do it. So it was just applying it and, you know, coming into that game, you know, I just I just felt loose and, you know, confident in my in, in my game. So, um, you know, hopefully just continue to grow from that game and, you know, see what else can come next. And you talk about, you know, expanding your game, taking it to the next level and learning, you know, to grow in that regard. Is that an aspect that you're really going to work on, not only obviously to help help your team, you know, for the upcoming season, but also to take yourself to getting into the next level? Yeah, 100 um, percent. You know, really going to focus in just on, you know, my development, uh, you know, my skill development, you know, as well as, you know, keep my body healthy. Uh, always about, you know, being in the weight room, getting stronger. Uh, you know, things like that, but really skill development, you know, focusing on the things, um, you know, areas of weakness or, or areas that I haven't been as strong in um, in the past. So um, it's going to be an area for me that I really need to, you know, lock in on. Cool. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Yeah. Then we'll go to Patrick again. Kyle, uh, yesterday Purdue announced Terry Johnson was was going to move over to, to take a job with them. Um, I'm just curious, obviously you worked – closely with him during his time here relationships I'm sure from even before just memories uh thoughts on on him making that move anything you you want to say about you know Terry and, and your time working with him I mean coach T uh that's my guy you know I just you know I wish him nothing but the best you know if this is the move you know it's going to be best for him and his family you know um you know 100% behind him uh, there's no bad blood you know coming from me or or, or anything like that so um yeah, you know, Coach T and his time working here he helped me a lot, you know, with my development, um, you know, and our relationship had built a lot, you know, once I started uh, working out with him more too. So, um, yeah, you know, I just, you know, I wish him the best in, you know, his future endeavors, but if that's what's best for him and his family, you know, support him 100%. Okay, next, uh, Tim Hall. Hey, Kyle, good to have you back, man. And, you know, your game, you've improved in so many areas in your four years here. I, you know, you were asked there about three-point shooting. I wanted to specifically ask you about what your improvements have been at the line and how important that has been. I mean, some guys can struggle their whole careers and not up their free throw percentage, but you were, you know, 40, 50%. And you, do you know what your percentage was this last season? 
Um, did it hit 80? I, don't, I'm, I, I didn't really look. Almost 85. Okay, you missed yeah. single digit shots this year at the line. I mean, what, what goes into that? And is there a way to simulate like hitting pressure shots? I mean, how much work do you put in there? Um, yeah, like I, like I said earlier, it was just a lot of, uh, a lot of reps, um, you know, that confidence of just doing it, um, you know, throughout this summer, you know, every workout we were doing, it was, it was a lot of free throws in between each, each drill we were doing all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, it was just an area I focused on and, you know, I was able to improve it, um, just by continued, you know, hard work in that area and focus on it. So, yeah. Thanks, man. Yeah. Okay, back to uh, Steve Heller. Yeah, Kyle. Um, <clears throat> curious about the feeling around this team. There's a lot of people that the websites do the projections. Have you guys top 10 among the top one or two in the Big Ten with Michigan up there as well? They've got a great recruiting class coming in, I guess. Um, just is there a feeling of some unfinished business? Uh, what What's the, the thought? Is there a hunger around this team? I know you're waiting to find out about Dwayne and EJ and whether they're going to be back or not, but you know, it's been almost a decade since Ohio State went to the Sweet 16 or won the Big Ten. Just uh, is there a thought it's time to, to put a stop to that? Or what, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, of course, um, you know, I don't think, I mean, for anybody, um, the way our season ended, you know, that's not that's not how we would, would have liked it to end. Um, so I think, you know, everyone has that determination, you know, to come back and just work that much harder, um, you know, to make a difference for next season. So. You know, I think we're all, you know, focused on on what we want and how we want next season to be. It's just, you know, it's just about, you know, locking down now and, and you know, putting in that work, uh, you know, when nobody's watching. So uh, this offseason is going to be important for us, um, you know, one through 15, however many guys we're going to have um, all the way down the line. So, um, you know, I'm excited to see uh, what that looks like. You and EJ, you know, you guys did your best against – you know, seven foot guys, and, and you'll see those type players again. Is it comforting to know that you got Joey there maybe to play 15 or 20 minutes a game and, and you guys don't have to play out of position on defense uh, so much? Uh, I don't know, just your thought about having him as a another, I'd say, weapon or another person to build that depth in there. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, I mean, I don't mind, like I told Coach, uh, in no way do it like I mind, you know, Garden, uh, their team's, you know, biggest player, but um, it definitely can be, you know, you know, wear down your body when you're when you're outsized. And I know the same uh, could probably be for EJ. Um, you know, I don't know how he feels about it, but um, it'll be nice, yeah, you know, to have another big body in there that'll be able to, you know, you know, battle with uh, these other big dudes. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, Adam, back to you. Al, as you're deciding to, to come back and, and give it another season and you talk about like, you know, how the bond that this group has and, and what kind of special things you could do if you all accomplish them together. Um, do you, what is your relationship like, or what is your, what are your conversations like with EJ, with Dwayne, as you go into the off season, when you've made the decision to come back to you, I'm sure you're going to support them either way, but do you recruit them? Do you, do you say like, Hey, I'm back. Like, you know, let's all do this. What is that? What is that interaction like? Um, when you guys are all trying to make decisions in the off season like this? Yeah. So I've talked to him a little bit, uh, you know, obviously even when I was making my decision, I was trying to keep them as updated as possible. Um, but my, you know, my words to them pretty much was just, um, you know, I want them to do what's best for them. Um, I'm, I'm not trying to, you know, get into, you know, persuading them one way or the other too much. Cause you know, it's their decision at the end of the day. And, um, you know, I want them to do what's best for them and, you know, their families and their careers. So, uh, you know, I'm going to be happy with whatever they choose to do. Uh, you know, obviously, if they come, if they come back, you know, that'll be amazing. But you know, if they decide to not come back, then you know, I, you know, I wish them the best as well. And I'm, you know, always going to have a lifetime bond with those guys. So, uh, yeah, there's nothing like I'm saying really to persuade them in any way. But uh, I definitely would be happy if they came back. I, I talked with Musa yesterday, and he was talking about just how how surreal it felt to, to lose that game and you got to take the bus back to Indianapolis, pack up, take the bus back home. Um, and I know you, like you said, you're still dealing with the, the concussion a little bit, but the, the, the feelings that you, you guys must have all gone through, what, what sticks out when you think back on, on all that time you guys had to spend kind of letting all that sink in and, and just, just to get home. Like, I'm surprised you couldn't stay the night. I mean, you had to get home that night. Like, 
Yeah. I don't know. What, what was that all like? Yeah, I mean, it was, you know, very, very disappointing, uh, just the way things ended. And then, you know, just being in the locker room, seeing um, the emotions from other guys, you know, talking with, you know, the older guys, like talking to CJ. Um, you know, there was a lot of emotions running through that locker room. And, you know, I was just like, it was feeling, for me personally, it was like, uh, you know, feeling sad um, that they had to, you know, go out there and compete and I, I couldn't be a part of it as well. Because, um, you know, everything, you know, everything happens for a reason, you know, um, you know, or Roberts played, you know, very well that game, um, you know, and, you know, after we ended up losing that game, getting back in the locker room, it was just kind of like shock. Uh, so, you know, I was just trying to be there for the guys. Um, and then, you know, like you said, we, we had to go back to the hotel, pack up and, and, and wait for the bus and then leave. So, um, you know, the whole time it was just it was just hard to process it all. But, uh, you know, it sank in more, you know, as we were leaving and driving back. Um, and that's kind of when I started to think about my decision more.